My name is Terry Golubchik, and yeah, I'll be talking about mostly about the history about uh, MySQL at my release mode, but also the uh, last third of the talk will be just comparison of what we have now and directly before that. Yeah, so I specifically start with the history and dedicate more of time to it because I think it's uh, very important to understand uh, how the current release model came to be. That was all in the video. And uh, <laughs> so that we wouldn't repeat old mistakes by doing something that we know already tried and we know it doesn't work. So I'll start from, well, early enough, not the very, very beginning, but uh, early enough. So in, from MySQL 3.23 and up to 5.1. That's years 1999 up to 2010. So at the beginning, MySQL used to have uh, alpha, beta, hammer stable cycle. And later, as far as I remember on the marketing requests, gamma and stable was replaced to RC and J, but it didn't change anything substantially. The releases were feature-based, that is, we had a certain set of features we wanted to have in this release, and when they were ready, well, then we made the release, and the release was ready when it was ready. In the very early MySQL days, there was even a principle no known bug, like we didn't release if we if uh, release has the bugs that we knew about, we think then they released. That was quickly abandoned. What uh, do you mean quickly? Five years. Yeah, and uh, just to make it clear, I'm for this talk, I'm going to use the Marcos rule all the questions at the end, no interruptions. Um, and the beginning, MySQL heavily relied on community testing. We got uh, lots of good detailed bug reports from community. They were testing alphas and betas, downloading and installing them a lot. The thing is, uh, at the beginning, at least my beginning on MySQL, the user base wasn't very hot, wasn't very big, and users were like early adopters, those who install new products, they are technically savvy, they are tinkers, they know new all the settings, and options, they didn't afraid to try them. Database for them was a product that they installed, and they consciously installed MySQL, and they were spending efforts to make it work good for them. This, this results in Lots of people using alphas. This results in good bug reports, sometimes even in patches. And that is, it caused the alphas as a result were very long. You can see how originally long alphas were. But then user base grew, and users who are coming were different kind of users. They just wanted database to work for them. They didn't even care what database it is. They probably were installing something else that was pulling up database and independence. This is not on this slide. This, was, this shift was happening. I mean, those early adopters, they didn't go away. But in percentage, there, well, there were smaller, fewer and fewer of them. I mean, the ratio of those users. For example, you can see that uh, in the early versions, uh, alphas were the longest stage in the cycle. For 5.1, this is no longer the true. We had longer beta and alpha was smaller than because users were not as willing to install alpha as they were waiting, waiting for beta to start actually trying MariaDB. The, another obvious outcome of the feature-based releases, they were irregular. We didn't know when we'll release. It'll just, it'll be ready when it'll be ready. And not users and particularly commercial customers were happy on that because they wanted to plan the feature rollout. So that in MySQL 5.5, uh, alphas and betas were renamed into one thing they called milestone. So there was like milestones, milestones, then RC and J. That didn't change anything much. It still was milestones were a pretty long step. They're still feature based, except that uh, MySQL relied much more on internal testing at that stage because users, as I said, user base 
what you what uh, quality of users, let's say, put it this way, it changed, and we didn't get as many early testing as we used to. So that, now, fast forward to MariaDB. I'm skipping MariaDB 5 versions because they were proper fork of MySQL, pulling from MySQL, merging with MySQL, so they're not applicable to what we're doing now. Uh, so MySQL, after the, after the talk, please. Uh, MariaDB 10, MariaDB 10, 0, 10, 1, it went back to the familiar old, old familiar MySQL model. This is the model we knew, this is the model Monty knew, it worked well, so why not to get back to the basics? It was feature-based, it has relatively long alphas, except that we had almost no internal testing, but and relied on the user testing again. But this was fine and it worked because at this point in time, MariaDB project was still new, user base was small, relatively small, and it was again those technically savvy early adopters who tested early versions and reported bugs and created good bug reports. But then MariaDB was growing, uh, the user base was growing, and this was shifting for MariaDB as well. This is basically the same history repeating. And people were unhappy with, uns with basically absent schedule of releases, they couldn't plan. We wanted to be MariaDB to be in distributions, and we need to time releases to, to be ready when distribution is ready. So for that, we need scheduled releases. And then, starting from MariaDB 10.2, we switch to a train model that is time-based releases. Ideally, it means we release at this specific date, plus minus a few days or a week. And if the feature isn't ready by that time, it just moves to the next move, move to the next release. That's 10.2 was the first one where we tried this way. We immediately realized we, can, we cannot keep uh, our old quality standards the way we did before. For example, it used to be that we add new features in alphas, we fix most bugs in betas, RC are just few minor bugs, and then we release a J. And with that time-based model, we immediately realized we cannot keep this doing this anymore. So we've redefined what alpha and beta means to be able to maintain this space and do time-based releases. This was in 2017 when we've changed the definitions, put them in, out in the knowledge base. But 10.3 was already using new definitions. Alpha was, we, were, we changed it so that we could add features in beta as well, as long as they don't break anything for existing users and don't remove features so we can add new features if they don't break compatibility even on beta. That was the change in definition. So it, this kind of worked, but you can see that the J date was still sleeping despite our best efforts. It was, and another thing to pay attention to is the 10.6 release. We, inst we started working on 10.6 like in summer or spring 2020, and then in Spring 2021, we realized that it's almost time to do the J, and we didn't even have the first alpha, so we released 10.6.0 alpha in April, 10.6.1 beta in May, 10.6.2 uh, RC in June, and yes, 10.6.3 J in July. That was the 10.6 release scheduler, and it was, as you can see, as you might imagine, like totally fake. We did, there was no stabilization, no much of bug fixing. And so 10.6 was not a good release. And despite doing all that, and despite very fast forward overall bugs and everything, ignoring problems, we still missed the release date and it wasn't in June, it was in July. So that's how well train model worked. So what do we have now? Now we have, uh, starting from 10.7, we have, we've changed how we do releases. We do quarterly innovation releases with new features. Every release is maintained for a year. Then uh, every second year we do LTS releases, which are maintained for five years. Their timing is designed to match the Debian release timing so that we could do a next five year release before the next Debian release, so that they could 
new debian could have then used MariaDB possible with the appropriate long maintenance time between the two innovation releases between the two releases uh, we have uh, so-called preview releases the point is to give the users an early preview of the features so that users could complain and comment and we can still fix something in those features before they get pushed into the main release but also preview releases serve as a hard feature deadline and if some feature didn't isn't ready by the time of the preview release it will not be in the name next innovation release which means that and they are which, which means that basically six weeks after the feature is ready and in the preview release but before it's getting pushed into the well actual release this is the time we use for internal testing internal QA and the, every feature must get a sign off from the internal testing before it's getting pushed into the main release and uh, so this is the how releases work, work on this model uh, you can see that now we have very stable uh, release data. The dates don't flip. You can see like September, September, December, March, and June, always in the same month for preview releases. And basically always on the same month for RC and G, except that there's a release which is timed at the end of May. And it, if it'll flip a few days, it'll be beginning of June. But it's not slipping further. There will be no July, it'll begin May, June. Oh, uh, May, June. It's, it, could, it could deviate a few days, but it's still. So we have very stable, uh, very stable and predictable release schedule now. For the point of completeness, I'll have a couple of slides about MySQL. Although I'm, I wasn't an Oracle at those days, so this is just an outsider view. I don't really know how it works and what the problems they had. So for MySQL 8.0, they went away from the previous ultra beta you know, milestone. RCJ model and changed to what they called continuous development model. It is, that is, they had a couple of milestones, then RC, then J. They kept this J for like five years, maybe, and they kept adding new features into it. They you heavily relied on internal testing, which was supposed to make features good enough to be pushed directly into the J version. I don't, I don't have exact data, but uh, rumors were that it didn't work very well and quality deteriorated and number of, well, num number of security issues that are visible from public CPU Oracle security reports was also, well, pretty high. So it seems like it didn't work very well. So, and that's why they switched to another model in MySQL 8.1, which is doing quarterly innovation releases. And uh, twice a year, every second year, they do an LTS release with five years. And if you think this looks vaguely familiar to something you've seen on the earlier slides, you're not wrong. I don't know why, if, if it's a coincidence or not, that, that one I don't know. So, um, do we have a lot of time or do we have a little bit of time? Probably a lot. Time until, um, well, or five. And no. So, 35 minutes. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I speak fast, I'm almost ready. So um, now let's compare to most uh, important, that is two last MariaDB release models, because those are the models that will likely most highly influence whatever MariaDB will be doing in the future. So what we've learned from five years on staying on the train model, which is I'll be calling from now on all release model from 10 to 6. Well, the basic conclusion is that train model and year releases, they just don't mix. The reasons are to a big part psychological, because when somebody needs to implement a feature that takes, I don't know, a month, and the deadline is like nine months in the future, then yeah, developer can do something, can fix bugs, but doesn't start working on the feature until there's at least like two months before the deadline. At, at, that, at that point in time, people start working on the features. And I've seen this like every single year on, for many people. And I've, I've been doing, doing this myself too, I know. And I know I shouldn't, I shouldn't have been doing that, but I was. 
because that's still the line is in the very far indefinite future and the feature is so small. Yeah, but then when you start working on it, it turns out to be not a one month feature, it's like three months, four months. And yeah, so the deadline, the deadline comes and it turns out at every single time that we don't have anything ready at all completely. So uh, we cannot just roll out a completely empty release with zero features after a year of working on it. So we, we do the only possible thing we could delay the we release the delay the deadline. And then everybody start frantically working on their features to have them ready at least possible in some form to get in push, to have them get in push. Then some features are getting pushed, others are still frantically working on, then we want to release then like one day before one day before the release, more features are getting pushed which are not even possible but can be fixed after the release is done, which doesn't happen. There of course no place in this schema for any testing at all because like you know we, we want to release and five hours before the release something big is getting pushed. And this is because the deadline is very fine in the future and because if you miss a release, if you feature miss a release it has to wait a year. So the price of missing a release is very high. And surprisingly, the new model, it has fixed all of those problems. I'm saying surprisingly because it was mostly a coincidence. It wasn't the goal of it. Completely disagree. Yeah. And, and, and no, no doubt. Questions after the talk. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, so um, with the short three month cycles, it's much easier to plan time, particularly because, as I said, we have preview release in the middle, that's only six weeks for one development cycle, and you don't postpone a feature if you only have, if the deadline is six weeks in the future. It's very, it's basically very near, and people don't postpone starting working on feature. That's, then if the release is if, missed, if something isn't ready, the price is very small, it'll be in three months in the next release. So it's much easier to say no and release something which has less features in it. Also because the expectations are, releases are smaller, so that there are less expectations that there'll be a lot of features in the release if the last release was only three months in the past and the new one will be only three months in the future. So releases could be smaller. It's easier to for a feature to skip a release because the penalty is, is much smaller. It's easier to plan, plan time for developers. Also, this guarantee we have, as I already said, uh, guaranteed six weeks of internal testing. There's no, we never had that in the model of any feature getting pushed without testing one day before the release. Everything gets obligatory six weeks of testing. Well, maybe less, less, but less depends on the tester's opinion. But every feature needs to be approved by a tester, and every week, every feature gets its proper beating from a tester. So we get to do a lot more testing now. And many bugs are found during this period and fixed. And they're not getting out to the users. Also, it happened that a feature didn't pass, wasn't signed off because there was just too many bugs in it, which again was not a problem at all. The bugs were fixed and the feature gets pushed in the next three months. This is not a problem. Also, so the mix of one year and five year release was supposed to have a reasonable, keep the number of branches to maintain to a reasonable number and to use the merge overhead, I can tell right ahead that it didn't work. Anyway, so uh, the summary of the uh, new model. So the good stuff, uh, we have much more predictable release scheduler. We do a lot more testing. We don't have those uh, crunches before the every release and people are frantically trying to work in a feature time to push them in, in whatever state. And we have, that is, uh, that is, I thought we will be doing a lot more features to LTS release, but it didn't happen. And my explanation for this is because earlier in early model, we were delaying, if the feature wasn't ready, we were delaying the release until everything gets ready. Now we do not delay anything and we still get as many features as we used to do before. But we do have uh, significantly less bugs now. So bugs here, 
So as the footnote says, it's bugs reported by external users, so not our internal testers. For every LTS release for the from the day it went GA within the next six months. That's because 2011 was out only for six months, so I wanted to do like more fair comparison. So you can see 2011 was the first release where we had actually less, well, the, the bugs, bugs per feature was below one. We had less bugs than we introduced features. And particularly if you compare with uh, other Debian releases with 10.5 and 10.3, 10 10.11 10 was much better, like almost four times better than, the, than our first release with, uh, with using this criteria of number of bugs per edit feature. Well, not everything was good in this new model, so one year releases aren't used much. Maybe, yeah, so maybe one year is too little, maybe they aren't properly advertised, and maybe the model isn't properly explained because, as we've heard uh, uh, on, well, on this conference yesterday, people don't quite understand how it works, so maybe this was the reason. We have very little feedback from preview releases, so the goal of getting them out to users to try and get comments, this didn't quite work out. Although still preview releases were very successful from making a hard deadline for features, the other goal of doing early testing with community that didn't quite work out. Um, some, developing some larger features takes longer, and this is, I think, because people start losing focus working on those short six-week cycles, and it's something we need to fix. And Yes, the, one of the main problems is we have too many branches and do too many merges before every release. And this is we definitely need to fix. We need to somehow, well, I'm not going to propose solutions on this talk. This was a talk which is introduction for discussion. And so as a, as a summary, new model, it has definitely fixed problems that the old model had. We now have predictable release scheduler. We have measurably high code quality and the development is much more relaxed without constant stress before every release. But we have lots of branches and merges, and one year releases, they see little use, large features take longer. So this is what we need to fix. So this, is, this talk was an introduction to the discussion about how to change the release model. And in my opinion, we should preserve the good stuff of whatever we're doing now and fix all the bad stuff, but not throw the baby with the water. 